Okay, let's look at another example. In this case, we're going to look at radioactive decay. So we have a, radio, a piece of radioactive material. And what's known about radioactive material is that it decays as a, at a rate proportional to the amount present. So this seems very similar to the problem we just looked at, where we assume the population grew at a rate proportional to the amount present. Here, radioactive material decays as a rate, at a rate proportional to the amount present. So what that means is, if n is the amount of radioactive material, then the derivative of it should be some multiple of n, some multiple of the amount present. It's proportional to the amount present. So that's a constant of proportionality. Why do I s stick a negative sign in front of it? Well, we know this material is decaying, so we know the derivative should be negative. We know the amount of uh, material should be a positive quantity, so the derivative should be negative. I know n is positive, so I'm just in anticipation of the fact that this constant has to be negative. I'm going to explicitly put that in there just so we can visually see that, that that constant of proportionality should be a negative number. What do we know about this? Well. This is, this is the power of what we've just looked at so far. We've taken a very, um, in some sense, intuitive statement about radioactive material. How fast it decays really depends on how much there is of it. So if you have a lot of material, it decays rapidly. If you have a little amount of material, it, it doesn't decay as rapidly. So this is sort of a in very intuitive statement about radioactive decay. And from that, we immediately get what the form of the function has to be. This is a differential equation, an exponential growth and decay equation. And we know the solution has to be of the form n equals a e. In this case, it's the constant, so negative k t. We get that immediately. And that is very cool. So let's look at an example. It takes 8 days for 20% of a particular radioactive material to decay. How long does it take for 100 grams to decay to, and we've got some various checkpoints here, 50 grams, 40 grams, 0 grams. What do we know about our function, n in this case? If n, well maybe I'll write this, n of t is the amount of radioactive material at time t, and here we're going to work in days, because the question is given us in terms of days, amount, uh, maybe I should write that the amount we mean grams in this case, so it's the amount of, in terms of grams of radioactive material at time t days. What do we know about this function? Well, we immediately get that it has to be an exponential function from its differential equation, it must satisfy. It must satisfy. So this is n equals a e to the negative kt. What else do we know about it? Well, in this problem, we know that the amount we start with is 100 grams. And we know that eight days later, how much is left? Well, after eight days, 20% of the material has decayed. So 20% is gone. What's left is 80%. So if I started with 100 grams, eight days later, I'd have 80 grams. This is all the information we have about n now, and that's enough. Using these last two bits, n of 0 is 100, n of 8 is 80, allows us to figure out what a and k are. So first of all, n of 0 equals 100 tells us that a is 100. n of 8 is 80 tells us that 80 has to be 100 times e to the negative 8k. That's an equation in k that we can now solve. 80 divided by 100, that's 8 tenths, that's 4 fifths. So 4 fifths is equal to e to the negative 8k. I now want to solve for k. I can take the logarithms of both sides. That becomes negative 8k. Or in other words, k is equal to negative 1 eighth ln of 4 fifths. I found, using that information, that we knew those two data points, I've now found the values of a and k, so we get the function explicitly now. We know that n of t is equal to 100 e to the negative kt, there's k, so this would be 1 eighth ln of 4 fifths times t. 
And we could do the same thing we did before. We could simplify this uh, because it's an exponential with a logarithm in the exponent. So this would be 100. Uh, Four-fifths would be our new base, and that would be t over 8. But a bit of simplification. We get this. A couple of ways to look at it. We could use base e, or we could use this base 4 fifths. Now, using that information, we can ask, answer the questions. How long does it take for the material to decay to 50 grams? Okay, so we want to look at how long does it take, for what time do we hit 50 grams? So this says we want to know when n of t is 50. When is n of t 50? Well, that's when 100 times 4 fifths to the t over 8 is equal to 50, or 1 half is equal to 4 fifths to the t over 8. And now I can get access to the exponent by taking the log. And I'll just take the natural log. Taking the natural log of both sides. Natural log of 1 half, that's, uh, I can rewrite as just negative ln of 2. And this will be t over 8, natural log of 4 fifths. So t is equal to negative ln of 2. There's an extra 8 out front and an ln of 4 fifths. So that's the time it takes for it to k to 50 grams. Uh, you might look at it and say, well, wh why is time negative? Well, it's not negative. There is a negative sign appearing in the expression, but the expression as a whole is not a negative number because ln of 4 fifths, 4 fifths is less than 1. The natural log of a number less than 1 is negative. So there's actually a negative number in the denominator. And that negative on the numerator would then make the entire expression a positive quantity. So that's just something to be aware of. Even though it looks like it's negative, there's still another negative number hidden in the expression. So this is approximately 24.4 days. So how long does it take to get to 40 grams? That was the next question. Well, same argument. 40 is supposed to be then 100 times 4 fifths to the t by 8. So 40 divided by 100, that's 4 tenths, or 2 fifths, is equal to 4 fifths t over 8. And so taking the logarithm of both sides, we get ln of 2 fifths is equal to t over 8 ln of 4 fifths which means that t is equal to 8 ln of 2 fifths ln of 4 fifths. And that is approximately 32.9 days. OK, so what's the last question? When do we get 0 grams? When do we get 0 grams? Well, we'd like to know when 0 is equal to 100 times 4 fifths to the t over 8. Divide both sides by 100. We want to know when 0 is equal to 4 fifths to the t over 8. And is there a value of t which solves this? No, there isn't. There is no solution to this. There is no time value for which 4 fifths to the t over 8 is 0. That means it, it never happens. There is never 0 grams of this radioactive material. So it will never happen. We can't get rid of this material. It'll decay and decay and decay and decay, but there's always something left. There's always something left. So one thing I just want to point out with this example was the first case we did was when it decayed to 50 grams. So we looked at 50, maybe I'll change to red here. We looked at when is the function going to be 50, or when is the function value going to be 50. Our original value is 100. So we've essentially asked how long does it take for us to get exactly half of what we started with. So when I divided both sides by 100, I got this 1 half here. And that, when I took the logarithm, became this ln of 2 ln of 2, negative ln of 2. And then we went all the way along and we got this expression here for the time. ln of 2 appeared. We got 
this uh, ln of 4 fifths appearing with this negative 8 there. Oh, that looks like k. Notice that the rest of that expression looks like, it looks like 1 over k. So this, in some sense, looks like ln of 2 over k. And that turns out to be the case always. I mean, the, the argument is the same. You, you start with an initial value, and you want to figure out how, much, how long does it take to get to half of that. You do this division, a half crops up there. This time, then, is known as the half-life. It's the time it takes for you to get exactly half of what you started with. And we've just worked out what the value is, and I'll write it here again. The half-life is ln of 2 divided by k, where k is the decay constant. Usually k will be given in terms of half-life. So you won't be told the k constant for a particular uh, radioactive material, but you may be told the half-life of such and such radioactive material is 500 years. And from that, you can use this expression to work out then what the k value is for your function. When you're writing it as an exponential a e to the k negative kt, you can then work out what that k value is given the half-life. So you may not be told, for example, here, what the amount is you have some time later. You'll probably be told the initial amount you have, or you'll be told something about that, but you probably won't be told about what's happening sometime later. You will instead be given the half-life. And if you think about what we use this information about n of 8 being 80 for, we use that to find the value of k. So instead, if we're told the half-life, well, we could also work out the value of k using this expression. Okay. So oftentimes radioactive material will be talked about in terms of half-life and just realize that you can just use that to find the k value in the fun exponential function that you're using to model the exponential growth. Okay. We're now going to go on and look at another example of exponential growth in decay and this is known as Newton's law of cooling and heating.